It may be an embarrassing question to begin things with, but what does your anus have to do with the United States of America? Well, if we take the birth of America, the birth of the nation, to be 1776 with the Declaration of Independence, it's interesting that the 84-year cycle, which is how long it takes for Uranus to do one full complete rotation relative to the Earth, is completed in April 1861, which is the Civil War, but it gets better. The liberation of Lincoln and freeing the slaves and the whole new revolutionary impulse that's continued to within one week of exact alignment 84 years later, in June 1944, with the invasion of Normandy and the eventual liberation of Europe at the end of the Second World War. These are some of the mind-bending ideas revealed in Richard Tarnas's magnum opus, Cosmos and Psyche, which was a real surprise for me to read when I first got my hands on it, because I have a conventional history degree where I studied war, genocide, famine, humanitarian crises, and all of the dark aspects of humanity for three years at university without laying a single thought upon astrology being the secret guiding force of human history. And actually, I think Richard Tarnas was quite surprised himself because his original work, this is his credibility, is The Passion of the Western Mind, which is widely regarded as one of the best summaries of Western intellectual philosophical development on the market today. This copy was obviously from, I think, a Christianity course secondhand, but it's an interesting video to explore because in this episode of Inner Work Essentials, I'm going to be introducing the idea of astrology from somewhat of an esoteric and abstract perspective, but also from a practical perspective which gives you a higher level of education about natal charts, personal transits, and world transits, so that you can stop being lost in superficial interpretations and actually invest the time to go deep into the world of astrology as it relates to your inner work. So, where do we dive in? I'm going to dive in straight with the archetypal significance of astrology itself. It's something which I don't lay too much emphasis on in my own life anymore. Went through a period of sheer fascination with astrology a few years ago. Even in some of my client work, I used to incorporate natal chart readings and things like this, but now I don't really touch it too much. And yet, very, very, very significant for this reason. Let me get the quote out. Richard Tarnas again, this is his magnum opus after three decades of research. Three decades of research, having written an intellectual history of Western development. Take it or leave it, but I'm going to read a quote from the book. Why astrology? From an astrological perspective, the planetary archetypes constitute a kind of Olympian pantheon of fundamental principles governing the ever-shifting qualitative dynamics of time. This is the Jungian theme of archetypes coming through with the planets and the stars. The birth of any being or any phenomenon, whether a person, a work of art, a cultural movement, a historical phenomenon, a nation, a community, or any other organization or creative emergence, is seen as reflecting and embodying the archetypal dynamics implicit at the time of birth, and creatively unfolding these dynamics over the course of its life. A lot there, but essentially the example I gave at the very introduction, Uranus is widely regarded as the archetypal planet of revolutionary liberation and almost esoteric expansion. Those three dates, Declaration of Independence, Civil War of 1861, and the liberation of Europe. Of course, we can't read world history just from an American lens, but I'm just cherry-picking a few examples for the sake of entertainment and hooking your attention. This is a 500-page book that took three decades to write. I highly recommend you read it for yourself if you actually want to take astrology to a genuinely scholarly and academic level. Finishing off the quote with a Carl Jung extract. In Jung's words, quote, we are born at a given moment, in a given place, and we have, like celebrated vintages, the same qualities of the year and of the season which saw our birth. It's interesting that Carl Jung as well, it's very 
known that he's into the archetypes and alchemy, but natal chart wires, if you start reading some of the biographies written about him, he was using the natal chart privately without speaking about it publicly for the final decades of his practice. Why is this relevant? Why are the planets and stars relevant for your life? Why are things like the Saturn return from 28 to 30 receiving so much attention? Obviously, it's because we're interested in learning more about ourselves, and we're also interested in predicting the future. I think this is the main appeal of astrology when it comes to inner work. We have our natal chart, which is a snapshot of the stars in relation to where we were born at the time we were born, which reflects perhaps the archaeological, archaeological, archetypal influences on our personality and our psyche. And we also have these world transits and these personal transits to consider, not even to uh, go into things like the aspects themselves in opposition, a conjunction, a sextile, a trine, a square, many different ways of going into astrology beyond the sun sign and then maybe moon sign and then maybe rising sign. We have to go back into history. Some books I recommend you read in addition to this wonderful book, something like this, beautiful intellectual history of something which is often widely disregarded. And before going into the rest of the video, if you actually want a practical astrology book written by someone who was doing this work before computer generated natal charts were even a thing, Alan Oaken's Complete Astrology. This is the single best astrology book that I found out there. And if you like him, then you'll probably get a lot out of astrology in general. Where are we going to go in this video? My invitation for this video isn't to give you any practical tips about how to use astrology in your life. It's just to expand your concept of what might be possible. As I mentioned, I have a history degree, and if I had have brought up the idea of astrology being something that was important for World War II in one of my final exams, I doubt I would get a very high mark at all. But having read Cosmos and Psyche and the few books I recommended and far more in the library, I have to expand the possibility in my mind that human beings in the same way that we are under the influence and under the sway of archetypal forces from a depth psychology perspective, we might be under the influence of the planets as well. I think it's a tricky zone to be in because a lot of what you'll see right now, especially on YouTube, especially with astrology readings or every new moon cycle, full moon cycle, you can get a tarot reading to a company and then you can go wherever you want with it. It's very easy to get caught in delusion, which then potentially strips away your agency. How many times in the year does Mercury retrograde really need to dissolve your structure of being able to show up on work on time? have a meaningful conversation with your partner without emotionally spilling over or causing conflict unnecessarily, or otherwise your life falling to pieces. I don't know for certain. I think it's a really difficult place to explore while also keeping your feet on the ground. It's interesting that when I read Cosmos and Psyche, it was one of the first major astrological books that I read. You'll see just how significant it was for me. This book, is absolutely covered in highlights. It's got some absolutely magnificent uh, summaries as well of all the independent planetary archetypes. And yeah, it was it was really going through my mind as something which would help me to get to take my inner work to the next level. It did, and then there's a time to focus on more practical things like finances, health, and reading and researching in other areas of the more esoteric, more psychological space. My invitation for this very short, very concise, whirlwind, put the stakes in the ground, just consider astrology from a deeper level, is to read Cosmos and Psyche, and to keep your mind open that human history may indeed be under the influence of the planets and the stars. I can make this a two-hour lecture, bringing out many examples, for example, something like Adolf Hitler and Charlie Chaplin, being just a few days apart in terms of their birth and yet being very different characters, or something like a biography of someone famous like Carl Jung, and we can see how this halfway point of his Uranus transit was coinciding with some significant breakthroughs, and it's also the midlife crisis point. 
But these are ideas that are really going deeper than I feel is necessary for just sparking your curiosity. Again, in my one-to-one -one work, natal chart work, in the same way as any kind of personality indicator, like a Myers-Briggs indicator, or something like human design, which I personally don't resonate with too much, I don't place too much emphasis on these tools of understanding ourselves, which potentially draw our attention away from very practical, very pragmatic, trauma work, creative work, community engagement, and most importantly of all, diet, lifestyle, and purification of intuitive channels if you're going down the esoteric route. Again, I'm like a broken record on this channel sometimes. You need to do the purifying work, you need to clean out your pipe if you want to receive higher intuition and to look towards the stars and the placements of the chart based on a cafe astrology reading or someone's $50 reading off Instagram as opposed to going into your nervous system and doing somatic release work to actually make your fate magnetize and condense back in your own hands rather than being a destiny that's elsewhere. I think that's a far more interesting way to live your life during the healing period. I see what happens to people when they've spent too many years going deep into the astrology without going deep into the earth that's immediately around them. You end up getting floaty, you end up getting untrustable or untrustworthy, and generally being swayed by every retrograde or every moon, whereas actually I'm in a whole tangent in itself if you're going to go deep into feminine psychology and read women who've written about women based on decades of experience, you can see interesting correlations between over-emotionality or maybe a lack of groundedness or a lack of inner masculine development and having a fixation on planetary alignments or moon cycles and being so swayed like an unpredictable tide and then celebrating that as if it were normal. You can keep the emotionality and the beauty, but you can also have a lot more health and a lot more groundedness. And I find that the uh, echo chamber of astrology in particular, especially when coupled with tarot, especially when coupled with different things like human design or Myers-Briggs indicators, can really take you off track. So for this video, keep it short. Read a master like Richard Tarnas. This is the single best book on the impact of astrology on human history that I've ever encountered. I've got a history degree. This guy is very credible. He really has done the work and it's worth your time and attention. And if you're interested in going even further into these topics of intuitive development, let me just move all of these books out of the way and join me over on the next episode of Inner Work Essentials where we're going to be looking at psychic skill intuitive skill and not necessarily astral projection but working in the astral realm in a way which hopefully doesn't leave us floating into space we're going to look at the multi-dimensional human next episode of inner work essentials join me over there if you're ready for intuitive work if not well have a beautiful day but i'm going to be over there